Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over how to complete the um, the unit three practice work. Um, and so I'm just going to go through all the different problems and say, hey, uh, here's what you should do, how you should do it, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we're going to walk through this, uh, you know, one step at a time. So we've got practice exam three. Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to preview this. Um, and so uh, the first thing that you're going to do, just like on your exam, you're going to be able to, hey, please complete this below. You're going to be able to download this Word worksheet right away. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, open up this Word worksheet. And um, what's that called? Uh, you've got the uh, probabilities right here. And so you're going to have to actually download the Word worksheet. Um, and so what I would suggest um, is copying these uh, things right away. So probability with the z-score, and then also these right down here, copying each one of these into Excel, and then uh, being able to uh, access those as you're going through the exam. So I'm going to open up an Excel document and let's do this. Um, and so I've got this chart right here. You can click like on this, you hover over it and click control C. And then uh, we can do a few of these if you want, um, you know, just in case you need to do more than one. So, you know, just put four and then do like, hey, uh, probability with Z scores. Okay, and then do another one, and then we're going to do CI around a mean. And then, hey, we've got this. This right here is for a confidence interval around a mean. Control C, put it right there, put another one. You know, we might have three different ones to do. And then we'll do uh, CI around a proportion. And then control C knows we might need to do two. And then uh, let's spread these out a little bit. Let's see here. And then sample size. Um, and then I, I was talking to some other students and it wouldn't be a bad idea for you guys to be like, hey, uh, you know, on your actual worksheet, um, number these, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And then this one uh, is for confidence interval around a mean uh, using a z-score with a known population center deviation. So this one right here would be one. Um, whoops. I don't know why it's doing that. One. Okay, and then this is two. Uh, and then this is three, four, five, so on and so forth. Um, so but let's go ahead and go through our uh Excel or so through our worksheet right here. Um and uh we're we're not gonna do all of these. Um, but uh, I'll try to get through uh, quite a few of them as fast as I can with you. First of all, Waco City Council wants to know about how local businesses feel about traffic patterns in Waco. The City Council breaks down the businesses into four groups based on the number of employees and randomly samples a total of 50 businesses proportionate to the number of businesses in each group. So we've got uh, this right here, the uh, the four different groups. Now, if I were to say, hey, I've got four different groups of North Texas, South Texas, East Texas, West Texas, uh, this right here would be cluster sampling. Or if I were to say, uh, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, or anything that's naturally occurring, uh, that would be cluster. But this right here are, hey, based on business size, and you choose, hey, one to five employees, six to 25, 25 to 100, 100 employees or more. So this right here, you're, you are controlling the strata that they are broken up to. So this is stratified random sampling. 
Okay, three of these are reasons why we should sample and one is not a good reason for sampling. Uh, so samples are more accurate than polling the entire population. That's not true. Uh, examining the entire population may destroy the entire uh, population. That is true. Uh, and so uh, let's see, it's expensive to study the entire population. That is also true. And this is right here is contacting the whole population is time consuming. Uh, that is also true. So the only one of these is that is not true is this one. Samples are more accurate. That's not true. As pulling the entire population will always be more accurate. Aviation Black Box Company makes 30 black boxes a day. They randomly choose three black boxes a day and go through the destruction test in a single day where the total possible number of samples of three that can be taken from uh, from uh, from the sample of 30. So, or from the population of 30 rather. So in order to do that, you're just going to use the combination formula um, and to, to, to determine the total number of possible arrangements of three out of 30. So I'm going to do equals combination 30 that are made a day and three that are taken. And so it's going to be uh, 4,060 is going to be the answer. That's how many different uh, arrangements of black boxes uh, can be made in a day. Okay, uh, three of these statements are true about sampling distribution, but one is not. Uh, which of the following is true um, about the sampling distribution of the sample means? Sampling distribution of the sample means tend to be more normally distributed. So which one is true? Uh, sampling distribution is more normally distributed. That is true. A sampling distribution can be made up of samples of all different sizes. This is definitely not true. It's got to be all the same size. A population distribution will be made up of more data points than a sampling distribution. That is also not true. A sampling distribution always has more data points. A population distribution will be narrower. Uh, no, the sampling distribution will always be narrower. So it's definitely this one. Um, this one uh, just to let you guys know, the only possible answers are G, H, I, K, J, M, and N. Uh, and so a hotel takes the sample of 100 rooms and 40 are full. I want to be 95% confident of what the actual population proportion is. Right here, you're looking population proportion. Okay, so uh, we are finding a confidence interval around a proportion because I already have the sample size. So I'm going to go with M. So M so, because I already have the sample size, and I want to know uh, what the actual population proportion is. A sample of 20 grocery bills are taken with an average of 75 and a sample standard deviation of seven uh, 15. I want to be 90% confident of the actual population mean. So we're looking around a population mean. We already have the sample size. Uh, and so, and a sample standard deviation. Notice it says sample standard deviation. So, we are looking for a confidence interval around a mean when the population standard deviation is not known. Okay, so uh, we're going to go with K. The proportion of hotel rooms that are full is 40% with a margin of error of 6%. I want to have a margin of error of 4%. How many rooms are needing to be sampled? So right here, it says, how many rooms are needed to be sampled? That's finding a sample size. Sample size around what? It's around a proportion. Why? Because I've got a proportion right here. 40% are full. Okay. So uh, we are going to do find a confidence interval. Nope. We're going to find a sample size associated with a confidence interval uh, uh, around a proportion. So we're going to do N. Okay. L, L, M. There we go. N. Okay. A sample of 20 grocery bills taken with an average of 75 and a standard deviation and a known standard deviation of 15. I want to be 90% confident of the actual population mean. So uh, this right here, we already know the sample size uh, and we know the population standard deviation. Uh, and then we've got the, the mean of 75. And so we're going to do find a confidence interval around a mean when a population standard deviation is known. So we're going to go with I. Okay. Population mean uh, of grocery bills is 82 with a known population standard deviation of 15. What is the probability of taking a sample of 15 and getting a sample mean of 83? So right here, we are doing a probability of an observation because it says, hey, what's the probability of taking a sample of 15 and getting a sample mean of 15 or of 83? What's the probability of doing that? Uh, so we are going to do a single observation Nope, we're doing a, a group of uh, one size compared to all groups of the same size. In other words, 
uh, a sampling distribution of the sample mean, and we're finding the probability associated with the z-value of a sample compared to the population. So we've got a sample compared to the population, and uh, we're doing h, wherever h is. I don't even see. There we go. The population mean of grocery bills is 82 with a known population standard deviation of 15. What is the probability of taking one observation and getting a mean of 83? That's right here, single observation, which is G. Okay, because known standard deviation. What's the probability of getting one observation and a mean of 83? So that's this right here. The point estimate of the average grocery bill is 75 with a standard deviation of 15. How large of a sample is needed for the max margin of error of three? So that's the needed sample size around a mean, because we've got a mean, the point estimate of the mean is 75 with a population standard deviation of 15. So we need the needed sample size, which is J. Okay. Uh, the mean of a sampling distribution is 17 with a standard error of two. What's the population mean? Anytime that you have a mean of a sampling distribution, in other words, you've got the mean of all the possible samples combined. So, you know, coming up here, uh, how many different possible samples were there? Uh, there were 4,060. So you've got all the different possible samples. Every single one of those samples has a mean. If you take the mean of all of those means, it's going to be the exact same as the population mean. So that's going to be 17. Okay. Uh, five students collect survey data from their 10 friends on each of the amounts, amount of time spent watching Netflix last week. Each student has, uh, each student's average from their uh, sample of 10 friends is listed below. Uh, which student has a sampling error of negative three? So, first thing that we're going to do, we're going to copy this right here. Go slightly above to slightly below. And we're going to go into Excel. And uh, I'm just going to have another scratch sheet right here. And we're going to do equals average six. So sample uh, sampling error is sample mean minus pop mean. So we're going to do uh, which one has a sampling error of negative three. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be the one that has uh, three because equals three minus six is going to give you negative three. So it's going to be Joe. So Joe has a sampling error of negative three because three minus six equals negative three. Okay, students either finish a test very quickly or take a long time. The population follows an extremely bimodal distribution. How large should samples be in a sampling distribution before the sampling distribution starts to follow a normal distribution? Uh, in short, uh, sample sizes should always be 30 to follow a normal distribution unless it unless the population is already normally distributed. Okay, so we're going to go with 30. Um, the only way that I would do something else is, hey, it's already normally distributed. How large should it be? And then any size would work. Okay, which of the following is able to be changed by the researcher? Can the sample mean be changed? No. Can the population mean be changed? No. Can the number of observations uh, in the sample be changed? Uh, yeah, I think so. Standard deviation, can that be changed? No. So the only thing that the researcher can do is say, hey, I'm going to increase the size of the sample. Okay. Now, your exam is definitely going to include more questions like 10 through 17. Uh, the first nine questions that we just did, uh, I basically am summing up in just two questions because I've got to make it so that you guys can do this exam faster. And also this right here is just for you guys to practice. It is definitely, this is not going to be on the exam, this, this chart right here. But it's definitely good for you to use because all of these questions, you've got to use the chart really to be like, hey, what should I use? Okay, a sample of 30 Baylor professors reveals that those 30 professors spend 20 hours on average constructing an exam. The population average is 18 with a standard deviation of four. What is the sampling error? Okay, uh, when compared to the mean one sample uh, of one sample compared to all other samples of 30, um, 
about how far the uh, the mean of each sample of 30 deviate from the actual population mean. In other words, what's the standard error? Okay, what's the popu what's the probability that a sample of 30 professors having spent an average of 20 hours or more? So this right here is saying, hey, you know, come right back up here. Which one of these is it? Okay. This right here is comparing a sample of 30 to all other samples of the same size. So we're going to do the find the probability associated with the z value. Um, so uh, we're going to come probability, but we're going to come right here. So uh, first of all, uh, a, let's just start putting some information here. N is 30. Standard deviation is 4. Uh, population average is 18. Um, what's the sampling error? Sample mean, 20. So sampling error is going to be equals sample mean minus population mean, which is going to be 2. Okay. But your questions might be different, you know, as I'm sure that you've already seen. Um, yeah, so don't worry about this. This is just extra information. Uh, when comparing the mean of a sample of one uh, to all, what's the, uh, about how far does the mean of each sample 30 deviate from the actual population mean? So in other words, what's the standard error? So it's equals standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And so it's going to be 0.73. Uh, what's the probability that the sample of 30 professors having spent an average of 20 hours or more or more on constructing the exam? So we're going to do, first of all, what's the sample z-score? Uh, equals sampling error divided by standard error. So that gives us our z-score. And then to get the this right here gives you the probability below. But to get the probability above, you're going to do equals 1 minus norm dot s dot dist put in the z score and then type in true and that'll give you the probability of above okay and so it's going to be point zero zero three okay so a sample of 100 light bulbs was taken. The results from the survey indicated the life of a light bulb follows a normal distribution with a mean of 650 with a standard deviation of 50 days. Without any other data available, what's the best estimate of the population mean? Well, that's just saying, what's the point estimate? 650 days, okay? Because it says, hey, we've got a survey, follows a normal distribution, it's got a mean of 650 days. I don't have any other information. The best estimate is the sample mean that I just calculated. What's the standard error? Uh, well, before I do this, well, I'm calculating uh, what's the margin of error, percent margin of error. All right, so I have a population standard deviation right here. So because I have a population standard deviation, I've got a mean of 650. Uh, there's a sample of 100 light bulbs, and I'm calculating a 95% confidence interval. I'm going to go to confidence interval around a mean. So I've got confidence interval around a mean, or if you wanted to do this, you could also go, hey, uh, let's look at this. Confidence interval around a mean, margin of error, population standard deviation known, find a confidence interval around a mean. So it's this one right here. And so um, I'm going to do uh, right here. Let's just delete these. Okay, uh, what's the standard error? First of all, what is X? 650, and I'm going with 95% confidence, so 650. And then the sample size, 100. Okay, and then what's the standard deviation? 50. Uh, what is the standard error? And it's going to be equals standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, okay? And then what's the margin of error value? So it's going to be equals the Z of 1.96 because we know the population standard deviation multiplied by the standard error. So that's 9.8. So first of all, what is the standard error? Five. 
I'm calculating a 95% confidence interval. What's the Z or T value that I should use? So 1.96, uh, which is right here. Oops. So 1.96. And then what's the margin of error? So I've got the margin of error right here, 9.8. Okay, what's the percent margin of error? Percent margin of error is equals margin of error value divided by the mean. Okay, and so I took margin of error divided by the mean, because if this mean was a lot smaller, then it would be like, hey, the margin of error is a lot bigger compared to the, the, the mean. But this margin of error is pretty small compared to the mean, so it's just going to be 1.5%. Uh, so if you were to change this to percent, you're like, hey, uh, 1.508 or, yeah, so 1.5. Based on the sample, how can I interpret the results? Okay, so I'm 95% confident that the average life bulb span is between 650 plus or minus, uh, you know, 0.15. Um, I am 95% confident that the actual population average lifespan is a, of the light bulb is between 640 and 659 days. Okay, so that's the mean plus or minus the margin of error. This one is the mean plus or minus 1.5%. Um, but this right here says I am 95% confident that, hey, on a, you know, this, this average light bulb uh, the lifespan of this average life bulb is going to be between 650 plus or minus 0.15. Um, this is saying the population average. That's what we are calculating. Hey, I'm 95% confident that the population average is between these two values. And so 95% of the light bulbs survive between this and this. That's wrong too, because that's not what we're calculating. We're not estimating the, uh, hey, 95% of the light bulbs, nope. So 95% confident that any given bulb's lifespan will be between this and this. That's not what we're doing either. We're estimating the population average. And so uh, just because of the way that it's phrased and set up, uh, we know that B is the correct way. The answer it because we're estimating the population average. Now, a sample of six students uh, on their consumption of caffeinated beverages uh, reveal the following information. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this. Uh, without any other information available to us, what's the best estimate of the population mean? Um, and I believe, yep, so I'm calculating a 95% confidence interval around uh, this mean as well. So I'm going to pa uh, paste this right here. And then I'm going to do equals average. Okay. So 3.166, except I'm gonna actually put it in here. It's a 95% confident again, so equals average. Okay, sample size is six. And then the T-score, um, so we've got 3.16. What is the standard error? We'll get to that. Um, and then this is, but we've got to get the, uh, the T score first. So we're going to do equals, uh, T dot inverse dot two T. And then the probability for 95% is 0 0.05. And then the degrees of freedom is going to be five. And so this gives us 2.57 for our T score. Now standard deviation equals standard deviation dot s and we're just going to highlight the values and that gives us a standard deviation of 2.04 equals standard error equals standard deviation divided by the square root of notice square root of the sample size and just follow this all the way down because this is for the t values okay so it's 0.8333 so what is the Z value? 2.57. Oh, what's the standard error? Standard error right here, 0.83. Uh, T value, 2.57. Now, some of these, 2.57 is technically correct. 
2.576. The reason why it's slightly, oh, so no, it's right there, 2.571. Uh, so the reason why this uh, would be right here, huh? That's really close, 2.571. Um, I was thinking for a second, and just make sure that you look through all of them. Sometimes if you calculate something with the T chart, It'll be slightly off in the hundredths place, uh, but this one right here is, uh, you know, it's only five, sorry, five one thousandths off compared to a 99% confidence interval with a Z value. So 2.571 is there. So margin of error, uh, let's calculate the margin of error value. So it's going to be equals the T value multiplied by the standard error. So this could be 2.14. And then uh, what's the margin of error percent? Equals 2.14 divided by, there we go, 0.67, And then uh, based on this, how can we do this? So let's let's calculate the uh, the upper and lower. So equals the mean minus the margin of error equals the mean plus the margin of error. And so I'm 95% confident that the average student uh, drinks three caffeinated beverages per day. Uh, this is definitely not it because we're not calculating the information about the average student. Uh, I'm 95% confident that the average student, which once again, we're not calculating the average student. We're calculating the average population mean uh 95 percent of students drink between this and this that's not what we're calculating either we're not saying what 95 percent of students do we're calculating the population mean so i'm 95 percent confident that the actual population average of the number of caffeinated beverages a student drinks is between 1.025 uh, and uh 5.309 this is correct because that's what we're doing uh, the last I'm 95% confident that the average student, once again, we're not calculating the average student. So it's D. Okay. Question 13. A sample of 30 Baylor professors reveals that those 30 professors spend 20 hours on average constructing one exam with a standard deviation of four. Calculate a 90% confidence interval, margin of error. Um what would you say uh, to the dean about how much time these professors are spending constructing an exam? Okay, so what we have right here is 30 professors spend 20 hours on average. So we've got a mean uh, with a standard deviation of four with a population standard deviation. So I mean with a population standard deviation. So let's come right up here, the mean, and we want 90% confidence. So the uh 20 and then we've got 30 professors 1.645 uh is going to be so what's the margin of error so first i need the standard deviation of four and then equals the standard error which is going to be standard deviation by divided by the square root of the sample size okay and then the margin of error value is going to be equals the z value multiplied by the standard error um, and then, uh, so it says, what's the margin of error? Uh, so that is the margin of error, 1.2. So 1.2. What would you say to the dean about how much time professors are spending constructing an exam? Uh, as the aforementioned information is pertaining to a sample, it's not possible to generalize it to the population. That's wrong, uh, because that's what we're doing. We're generalizing it to a population from a sample, but with a certain amount of confidence. 90% of professors spend between this and this. No, we're not saying what 90% of professors do. We're saying what's the population average. I am 90% confident that the population average exam time is between 18.8 and 21.2. This seems correct, but let's just uh, double check. I am 90% confident that the average professor, once again, we're not looking at the average professor. I'm 90% and uh, the average construction time, I'm 90% that the average construction time of all professors is 20 hours. Uh, this isn't correct either because this doesn't give me a, a confidence interval. So this would be correct if 20 hours plus or minus the confidence or the margin of error. 
So this right here, C is correct. Okay. We've got a few questions left. Okay. So uh, a sample of 50 faculty members indicates that 30 out of 50 support the idea to raise the minimum GPA to 3.5 to be admitted to the business school, creating 95% confidence interval around the sample proportion. Wow, I'm so nice. I even said, hey, you've got a sample proportion. So we're going to do a confidence interval around a proportion. So what is the margin of error? First thing that we're going to do here, uh, this is odd. Okay. Uh, so what's the margin of error? So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the proportion 30 out of 50. So equals 30 divided by 50. That's the proportion. Okay. What's the desired level of confidence? 95. So we're going to be 1.96. Okay. The margin of error is going to be equals 1.96 multiplied by, and just follow this, square root of the proportion multiplied by, in parentheses, one minus the proportion, close parentheses, divided by the sample size of 50. And that gives me a margin of error of 0.13. So in other words, 13.6%. And so the confidence interval, the upper limit is going to be equals plus, okay, and then equals the proportion minus the margin of error. Okay, so what's the margin of error? 0.136, okay, and a minimum of 50% of the faculty have to vote in favor of change. What information can you provide for the dean uh, about what he can expect for the upcoming vote uh, in a way that the dean would understand? Okay, so first of all, this confidence interval right here has to be above 50 for 50% because 50% is in between here. You know, uh, there is still a part of this confidence interval that's below this 50%. So we're not really sure that it's going to pass. Um, and so once again, it, since it's about a sample, you can't use it in population. That's wrong. 95% of the professors will vote in the same way. Uh, that's wrong. Um, I'm 95% confident that the vote will pass as 99% of the professors' votes will be between uh, this confidence interval. That's wrong. Um, it's just wrong. I'm 95% confident that the actual proportional professors in favor of raising the minimum GPA to 3.5 is between 4.64 and 7.36, this seems correct so far, we are not able to say whether or not we should expect the minimum GPA to be raised. This is correct, okay? I'm 95% confident that 60% of the professors will raise the minimum GPA to 3.5. Uh, this would be correct uh, if I said 60% plus or minus the margin of error, but that's not correct. But this run right here is correct, okay? because uh, it gives all this information and basically says, because this confidence interval surrounds that threshold, we can't say whether or not, uh, you know, what the answer is going to be. Yeah, a popular tech company is doing research to determine how long adults 20 to 40 years of age eat their cell phones before replacing them. A sample of 50 individuals revealed... <clears throat> Uh, reveals individuals keep their phones an average of 750 days with a sample standard deviation of 40 days, construct a 90% confidence interval. What's your margin of error? So margin of error, uh, margin of error percent. Um, so this gives me a mean. Uh, yeah, so I've got a sample of 50 with a mean of 750 and a sample standard deviation of 40. So I'm going to go Confidence interval around a mean. Looks like I had four questions using confidence interval around a mean. And so I'm just going to delete this. And it says 90% confident is what we want. So we want 90% confident. 
uh, a sample of 50 individuals. So we've got 50 people and we've got a mean of 750. And then we've got a population standard deviation or a sample standard deviation, sample standard deviation of 40. Okay, sample standard deviation of 40. And so because we've got a sample standard deviation, we're gonna do equals uh, t dot inverse dot 2t. And the probability is going to be 0.1 because uh, of the 90% confident. Um, and then we're going to do the degrees of freedom, which is going to be 50 minus 1, which is 49. And so this gives us our t-score. Um, and then we've got our standard error. So our standard error is going to be equals standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that's our standard error. And then our margin of error value is going to be the t-score multiplied by the standard error. So 9.48. So what's the margin of error? 9.484. And this is what I was talking about earlier with potentially having rounding error using the T distribution, or sorry, the T chart. It could have been slightly off. Um, so we're gonna, because yeah, it would have rounded up to 1.677. Um, because of that, it, this would have been slightly higher, but yeah, 9.484. Then margin of error percent equals divided by the mean. So 1.26. So what's the margin of error percent? 1.26. Then the upper value equals the mean plus the margin of error equals the mean minus the margin of error. And so we've got the uh, that as well. So I'm 90%. Once again, it's not about, you can generalize it. Uh, I'm 90% confident that the average length of time a 20 to 40 year old keeps their cell phone is 750 days. Once again, you still need the confidence interval there and there. 90% of 20 uh, to 40 year olds keep, no, I'm not talking about what 90% of 20 to 40 year olds do. I'm talking about the population average. I am 90% confident that the population average of how long 20 to 40 year olds keep their phone is between 241 and 759 days. This is correct. Um, once again, we're not talking about the average 20 to 40 year old. So D is correct. Okay. Question 16, Professor ID wants to ensure he's giving enough time for his students to complete his online exam. He wants to give 95, uh, wants to give, wants to be 95% confident that the average time to finish will be 10 minutes uh, less than the allotted time. The uh, population standard deviation for time to finish uh, an exam is three minutes. The tolerable level of error is two minutes. How many students should he allow to take the exam early to determine the appropriate amount of time uh, to allow the uh, to allow the entire remainder of the class? Okay, so we are determining the sample size. So sample size, more specifically, uh, sample size around a mean. Now, the tricky thing about this is, uh, he, yeah, the average time to finish will be 10 minutes less than the allotted time. I don't actually give you the average. Uh, so, uh, sample size, let's go back. I accidentally, sample size around a mean. I guess I never did this one. Sample size around a mean. Okay, so determine the population standard deviation. Population standard deviation is three minutes. Okay, desired level of confidence, 95. So what's the z-score? 1.96. Max allowable error? two. Okay. What's the sample size needed? Um, so we're going to do equals in parentheses, the Z score multiplied by the uh, standard deviation um, multiplied by, or sorry, divided by uh, the maximum allowable error and then we are going to square it. 
So it's going to be 8.64. Now, uh, it's like, oh, should it be 8? No, you always need to round up. So don't forget to round up. Okay, if this was 8.00001, you would round up to 9. Okay. All right, last question. A sample indicated that 60% of professors support raising the minimum GPA to 3.5 in order to be admitted to the business school. How large would a sample need to be in order to demonstrate that there's enough evidence that the threshold of 50% is below the lower limit in the 90% confidence interval? Okay. So the maximum allowable error to ensure you are above that 50% threshold is 0.09. So we want to know how large of a sample uh, sample size associated with a uh, with a proportion. So what is the proportion? 0. 0.6. Okay, what's the max allowable error? Notice it's 0. 0.09. The reason why is 60% plus 0. 0.09 is 69%. 60% minus 0. 0.09, 51%. Okay, so 51% is the first you know, proportion that's above 50. So we want to make sure that it's 51% or higher. So what's the max allowable error? It's 0 0.09. And then the desired level of confidence, 90%, that's 1.645, 1 1.645. Okay, and then uh, we've got this right here, determine the sample size. So we're gonna do equals the proportion multiplied by one minus the proportion. And it says multiply it again. So close those parentheses, multiply it again by in parentheses Z divided by the max allowable error and raised to the second. Okay. And this gives us, we need to have 80.17. Uh, and really I should have given you guys the, uh, here I should have given you an option for 80, but it is 81. Uh, so, because you always want to round up, because that you need a full 81 people. Uh, that 80.17 means, hey, you still need more than 80. Well, what's the first number more than 80? It's going to be 81. And so that's how you would do that. Once again, you're looking at 60%. So that's a proportion. Um, and then how large of a sample size would you need, need to be? So you're looking, hey, we've got a proportion. And then how large would the sample need to be? And so that tells me that we are doing, hey, how large should a sample be around a proportion? This says, how large should a sample be around a mean? So the big thing is, is right away figure out, hey, what should I use to solve? And, th and then after that, you just start plugging in all the available information that you have, and then you solve for whatever's missing and whatever the question asks you for. So um, that's all that I've got for this. Uh, don't forget that, uh, you know, you can also take, um, see here uh let's see here if you go to unit three sampling you can also go to three dash three dash two and there is a word document with all the answers as well right down here and a video going through all of these as well so if you want more uh information you can do that so yeah